Hey, what's going on guys? Mike from the Retro Lectors, and today we're going to discuss the VMU for the Sega Dreamcast. The fifth and sixth generation of consoles really utilized the use of memory cards as a mean to save progress made in game. But it wasn't until Sega looked at one and thought we could do better. The memory card was invented by Fujio Masoka at Toshiba in 1980. It wasn't commercialized until 1987. The first video game memory card wasn't released until 1990 for the Neo Geo AES. Previously, cartridge-based games used battery-based RAM to make saving possible. If battery-based RAM wasn't available, a code or password system was then used. Back to the AES memory cards. These were unique, not only to the Neo Geo AES home console, but it also had the ability to be used within Neo Geo MVS cabinets. This allowed players to bring game saves from home to arcades and vice versa. Once game consoles moved from cartridge-based games to CD-based games, memory cards became more of a staple. During the fifth and sixth generation of consoles, game companies flooded the market with first-party and third-party variations of memory cards. Enter the Sega Dreamcast and their VMU or their virtual memory unit. Unlike any other memory card before it, Sega thought to make a memory card that also doubles as a portable handheld. The VMU plugs into the Sega Dreamcast controller rather than the console. During the same generation, PlayStation mimicked the VMU with a built-in LCD screen, D-pad, and action buttons. The VMU's sole purpose isn't just a memory card. You can detach it from the controller and play console-specific mini-games catered to the VMU. Although these games are simplistic enough, they can grant the player with rewards that can be transferred back to the main game. Speaking of transfers, the VMU can also transfer files back and forth by plugging two VMUs together and sharing it with a friend. While the VMU is detached, be sure to have plenty of batteries because it saps the life out of them. The LCD can also double as an extra screen when plugged into the controller, showing valuable information like status, health conditions, as in Resident Evil Cold Veronica, or simply can hide your next trick play in NFL 2K2. While attached to the controller, the VMU gets its power from the console. While detached, on the other hand, there are not enough batteries within reach that can keep the VMU alive long enough. Having the ability to play games on the go and then have the ability to attach it back to the Dreamcast and use what you earned as currency in games was an amazing feat. Oh my God! Wow! Could this be the early brainchild of the Nintendo Switch? Maybe not, but Sega was ahead of the curve when it came to developmental ideas. Fun fact, Sega had another thing in mind when they developed the VMU. Stay tuned to the end to find out. Since its release, the VMU has seen many color variations and limited edition releases, some even fetching high prices on eBay and private Dreamcast forums. 2002, the demise of the Sega Dreamcast. In two short years on store shelves, the Sega Dreamcast reached the pinnacle of what a game console is and was. From the introduction to online gaming, to PC style accessories and browsers, to arcade perfect ports, the Sega Dreamcast had something for everyone. The VMU was just one of those tools that made it what it was. The Sega Dreamcast utilized many tools to make gaming fun for that period in time. The VMU was nothing short of that. Being able to play a game and take that game with you on the go and then take that game back home and plug it back into your controller and have the same amount of tokens and coins put back into the game was something that was revolutionary at its time. Even though it did eat a lot of batteries, the VMU was fun while it lasted. The answer to what Sega had in mind for the VMU was an MP3 player. At TGS 98, the Dreamcast was showcased to the Japanese audience, from concept consoles to a concept VMU. Though it never came to fruition, the iPod did take that market quite well. Sega looked at the memory card and thought what else they could do with it. And it's a marvel of technology that came out of it. Did you guys own any third-party memory cards and did you lose saves because of it? Put it in the comments down below, let me know what you guys think. Thanks guys.